We've got some cold weather in the forecast and that means ice is just around the corner. And in my neck of the woods, the first place that people are looking when they're thinking about early ice fishing is Red Lake. And it's not gonna be too long from right now when this video is posted that people are gonna be up there. We're probably just a few weekends away. So we're gonna talk a little bit about Red Lake in this video. We're gonna share some good tips that'll help you catch more fish on red during, during the early ice period. We're gonna go into a few different baits and kits that you can check out when you're heading up to red. But first things first, let's talk about some tips. Uh, we're gonna have Brad Hawthorne on here. We're gonna have Brian Brosnell on here and they're both gonna share some advice uh, for catching fish up on red during this period. But first things first, I wanna share four different tips from me that in my opinion, from my experience in the lake, that will help you catch more fish. Tip number one is going where they ain't. And that might sound simple, and a few of these tips may sound simple, but uh, for me on Red Lake specifically, they are especially true. And why I say you should fish where there aren't other people is because the way Red Lake sets up is it's kind of a bowl-shaped lake. There's not a ton of structure. There's definitely some structure, but uh, for the most part, these walleyes are just gonna be roaming around, looking for food. They're always on the move. And in my opinion, if you drop right down in the middle of a big group, your chances of catching fish are going to go down, down, down. And that's my opinion on it. That's been my experience. And one thing you'll notice on Red Lake is you'll see big groups of people. And the reason why they're there is not necessarily because the fishing is really good in that particular area. Usually it's because that area is directly in front of a resort or something like that. Somewhere where people are accessing the lake. So that's why the people are there. What I like to do is I like to go out of the resort or wherever I'm going out of and I'll either go right or I'll go left and I'll choose which direction I go based on how far I have to travel to get away from people. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is don't be the first anglers out there. And for me, there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one is I like to give the lake a little bit of time. You know, once it caps over, let things settle down a little bit. The bite isn't always as good right away when that first ice hits the lake. After, it had, after it's had time to settle down a little bit, that's when the very, very, very best bite happens. Um, and another reason for that, of course, is safety. So it seems like just about every year, you know, if you're watching on social media or if you're watching the news or anything like that, there always ends up people being people that get stranded out on the ice because a piece of ice broke off and started floating away. So something to consider as well. Safety is always number one in my book. So if you, uh, if you are gonna go out extra early and try and be out like the first weekend or you know the first or second week or something like that, just make sure you're paying attention to the reports. Pay attention to the weather. You definitely want good cold weather while you're there. If it's warm, that's when things start to break up a little bit and you start to have issues like that. Also, you wanna pay attention to what the resorts are saying because they're out on the ice every day and they're super dialed. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is make sure you're utilizing set lines. Whether that's a tip up or a dead stick or a tip down or anything like that. Um, and the reason for that is I've just had days out there where you might catch all of your fish on set lines. Or maybe you'll catch all your fish jigging. But either way, you have twice as many data points to play with and you get to figure out what the fish are really chewing on. So I'll keep that one simple because I've talked about it in the past and I'll leave it at that. Tip number four is another one of those no duh tips. And uh, that is go up with as many buddies as you can. Get a big group together and the reason why I like to do that up on red is just because you get more data points. Kind of like last tip, tip number three with the set lines. You just have more opportunities to figure out what's going on on the lake on that particular day. You know, whether that's figuring out what kind of baits they're hitting, are they hitting rattle baits, are they hitting spoons, spoons with rattles, spoons with glow, uh, glow sticks, flutter spoons, you know, like what's going on in that particular day. Um, and also you can split up and maybe say, let's say you got you and five other buddies up there. Three of you can go that direction. Three of you can go check to see what's going on over there. And uh, just more numbers is more data and you get to figure out what's going on on the lake on that particular day. And just remember too, the bite can change throughout the day. Sometimes there's bite windows and if you got uh, 
buddies or extra contacts up there and you can be texting with them and say like, hey, like, how's it been going? Or hey, I just caught, we just caught three fish in the last 15 minutes, I think the bite is on or anything like that. Just the more info you have, the better. All right, so that's four tips that I have for you for fishing Red Lake. Now I'm gonna throw it to Brian Brosdahl and he's gonna share some of his kind of like mindset when he's dissecting the lake up on early ice. One of the ways I like to start fishing red is start from the shoreline breakout. Sometimes the walleyes are still holding there. Depending on when they allow you to get on there, you know, Red Lake is big, it was shifting ice. But if you can, if the foot travels allowed, you get out there, that first break could be really good, even six feet of water, depending on the day you get. Darker day, some weather coming in, the fish will be moving. You know, in the middle of the day, or for most of the part, I'll use eight to nine feet of water, and I'll drill a bunch of holes. And if I, if I see a fish come through on my electronics or multiple fish, I'll kind of keep an eye on where they're going. There might be big rocks out there. Here's the thing, Red Lake is loaded with strings of rocks and there's mud, there's sand. So I like to be somewhere where there's rocks sticking out of the sand and find big rocks. And I don't like to fish on top of them, just off to the side of them. Because the fish have to go around, they end up right at your spoon. Jigging and hitting these spots, the more holes you drill, the more you learn about the lake. So don't just sit, set up and fish the first set of holes you fish. Fish, and as a general rule of thought, if I'm out there to catch a lot of fish, if I catch a couple fish, then I'll start unpacking a little bit. If I catch three fish, I'm staying there because it's gonna be a blast. Now let's hear some advice from Brad Hawthorne, who's also spent a bunch of time guiding up on Red Lake as well. He's gonna share some of his two cents on this early ice bite. I always tried to get to those softer bottom areas, those transition areas that you will find in the summertime. And what I had done the year before I started working the winter up there was I had some time in the fall and I went up there and I actually auto charted and got the bottom composition of Upper Red Lake because I knew that there were differences. I could see it in my color line, the hard and soft bottom uh, changes up there. And once I got it all, all mapped out, it brought everything together for me. And Upper Red Lake, if you get to those soft bottom muddy areas, are absolutely full of walleyes just about year round. There's a few occasions where they're not gonna be found out there, which is gonna be, you know, spring, springtime and around fall time. But that early season time period, that late season time period, Upper Red Lakes, even though it's shallow, still has those massive mud flats and buggy areas where you're gonna find, you're gonna find red eye, you're gonna find walleye, you're gonna find pike, you're gonna find those big crappies, you're gonna find them over those mud areas on Upper Red Lake. So if there's one tip I have for you guys is put in a little bit of work, use your Helix 7, your Helix 5, look for those changes in your 2D, or if you're super dialed with Mega360, I mean, anyone that has Mega360 knows you turn that on, give it a couple quick rotations, and you're gonna see that, that transition plain as day from hard sand or hard clay to mud on Upper Red Lake. So if there's one tip to, to, for Upper Red Lake, plug in that Mega360, let it spin a couple of times, and that'll tell you exactly where to be fishing. And the other part about Upper Red Lake, Fish will come in from twice, three times as far as you think they will. We've seen fish come in. When you activate those rattles on a spoon, you'll see those fish come in and beeline for your lure from outside the Mega 360. So that tells me that these fish are sensing these rattles from several hundred feet away. So remember that these fish can hear you. Be quiet up there, stay away from crowds, use some rattle spoons, and you'll catch a lot of walleye. Now let's talk a little bit about presentation on Red Lakes and some go-to baits. And we're gonna see what's in the box here. This is actually a kit that Northland just released and it is their Red Lake kit. And uh, we're gonna take a look at what's inside. All right, oh, one's still in there. All right, so as you can see, this kit comes with a bunch of different baits, 18 different baits actually. A lot of them are spoons specifically. You also get this neat Northland tackle box you can pop open here and see the inside. I always thought these boxes were really cool, kind of old school. And it also comes with one of those, uh, it's hard to see right here in my hand, 
and I don't necessarily want to bust this open right now, but it's one of those uh, stick-on rulers, and there's also a line clipper in there as well. But just going through some of these baits, uh, one thing that you uh, will notice if you fish Red Lake enough is that for whatever reason, it seems like reds and pinks and golds and stuff like that just seem to do well on the lake for whatever reason. I'm not exactly sure, but it is definitely, definitely a thing. One thing you'll notice in this kit is there's a lot of those colors and there's a lot of good presentations that, that work on the lake. So you have some buckshot spoons. This is a really good one right here. That's an eighth ounce, eighth ounce deal. You also have the bro bug spoon and the bro bug is a little bit newer. One thing that's cool about the bro bug spoon is it has a slim profile. It's got a lot of cool buggy detail on it and it also doesn't have rattles. So this is a little bit more of a finesse bait. Uh, I'm definitely a fan of it. I've caught a bunch of perch and crappie on it but I've also caught some walleyes. Um, you got more buckshots in here. This one right here is a, is a killer. It's got the dark color. Uh, it's got the red. It's the right size, it's an eighth ounce. You've got the coffin spoon in here as well. This is a really cool spoon for red specifically because for me, what I like to do on red is get loud, make a lot of noise, call the fish to your hole, and the coffin spoon's great for that. It's got the kicker tail, it's got the uh, classic buckshot, buckshot rattles in them, and it's got a bigger profile that moves a little bit more water. That's one thing I don't think a lot of people talk about is using a presentation that moves water. The fish can feel that on their lateral line. And that's what I like about this spoon. It's also a great spoon for plunging down into uh, into the bottom and kicking up, kicking up dirt and stuff like that. So that's a good option right there as well. Pink is a good color. Uh, in this whole kit, I think there's a total of 18, 18 different baits and spoons. I guess they're all technically spoons. Uh, if you consider the Forge Minnow Jig a spoon, it looks a lot like a spoon. Uh, this particular bait for me is a really good dead stick bait. It's also really good when the bite is super tough. So an old Brad Hawthorne trick is he'll, he likes to take the Forge Minnow Jig and he'll actually hook a whole live minnow on it. Um, I can't remember if he head, head hooks it or tail hooks it. I like to do both. Um, I've kind of adopted adopted the presentation a little bit. Um, but it's a really good finesse presentation to just drop down on the bottom. And uh, that's one of Brad's good tricks. Another one that they have here in the box is a couple glass buckshot spoons. And these are extremely loud. They got the glass rattles in them and really cool colors and a good profile that's, that's pretty similar to the traditional buckshot. Uh, but it's got the epoxy covering. This is a new bait. I haven't had the chance to use this on early ice yet, but for me, this is probably gonna be a really, really good early ice bait, just based on how loud it is. Um, and it's gonna especially shine on red for that exact reason. So aside from that, we got macho minnows. Macho minnows work great out on Red Lake. Nice profile, minnowy profile. It's got the kicker tail. Uh, there's also, the Forage Minnow Spoon, which is very similar to the Forage Minnow Jig in that it is kind of a finesse presentation. It's definitely thinner, it doesn't have rattles, and when the bite is really tough, sometimes these non-rattle spoons can be really, really effective. So it just depends on the mood of the fish. Um, you know, when we're up on like, uh, I should say down uh, compared to Red Lake. When we're down on Mille Lacs Lake and that's really clear, ultra pressured, you know, as we start scooting into the midwinter bite, these forage minnow baits, whether it's the spoon or the jig, become an important weapon. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. All in all, like I said before, 18 total baits. You got the ruler sticker, you got the line clipper, you got the box, it's a really cool kit, it's available right now on Northland's website, northlandtackle.com. So you can check it out there. You can find it either in that kit section or depending on when you're watching this, it might be right on the front page. So uh, something to check out. Hopefully you found this video useful and hopefully you learned something. Special thanks to Brad and Bro for sharing those bonus tips. And make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below because so we have a lot more content coming in the future. And until then, we will see you in the next one.